2005 uh, meeting of the Planning Board to order. Uh, the first order of business uh, is a review of the minutes from the previous meeting of January 18th, 2005. Uh, first, are there any uh, comments or proposed corrections? Paul. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just to note, uh, the members present, uh, I, I was present instead of Peter Cotter. We often confuse you with Peter. That's, <laughs> that's, quite, that's quite all right. Thank you. Any other comments? Barbara. Just the, minutes. the minutes, yes. Yes, I have some, I believe, corrections to the minutes. Um, on, on, on page five, where it says Mr. Hatem opened the public hearing, I believe it should be Mr. Sherman opened the public hearing. Um, several lines down, Mrs. Shankel stated there was a resident who called her who did not support this amendment and she told him the date of the public hearing. I didn't receive a letter from him. I just told him about the public hearing and suggested that he should attend. Okay. And. I, I guess I have a question, Maureen, that I should have asked you in the, long, the paragraph next to the last sentence on page five. Mm -hmm. It says the town council forward to request to the planning board to look at undersized lots and the opportunity to create affordable housing in Cape Elizabeth. I thought that was stimulated by us. No. Okay, thank no, you. No, it was a formal request from the town. Thank you. That's fine. Okay, are there any other comments, David? Um, page six, uh, fifth paragraph down. Uh, Mr. Mayor stated the town regulates the income of the buyer, and I think she might want to explain that. Uh, Mr. Griffin has called me earlier today to express his concern. In fact, that is what I said. Um, but his concern is it could be misinterpreted. Um, what, what I meant to say, what I meant was that the town has a requirement for a maximum income in order to qualify for affordable housing, not that we actually regulate the, the income of the buyer forever and ever. Okay. Does it make sense then to amend the minutes to reflect that qualification? Yeah. David, did you have anything else? Oh, that's it. Thank you. Barbara? On page 8, uh, middle of the page, well, sort of middle, but closer to the top than the bottom, there's a sentence that says, Ms. O'Meara stated that making a 7,500 square foot lot with 125 square feet would not be consistent with the intent of the non-conforming provisions. No, I'm not sure that was what was said because it doesn't make yeah, it, much it sense. Should, yes, it okay. should say with 125 feet, not square feet, um, meaning 125 feet of frontage. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with those uh, qualifications or amendments, do I have a motion? So moved. Okay, uh, David has made a motion to approve the minutes as amended and Barbara has seconded them. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, before we uh, get to our agenda, we did receive some correspondence and publications. Uh, they include the new urban news street trees article dated January and February of 2005, the planning commissioner's journal from the winter of 2005, uh, an email uh, from attorney Michael Hill dated February 15, 2005, regarding the Grover Road subdivision. That was responding to an email from Mark Winter on the same subdivision. An email from Susan Garrett concerning the request by Graham Pillsbury for private access, and that email is dated February 15 of 2005. A letter uh, addressed to the planning board dated February 10, 2005, from Richard Blake uh, concerning Thank you, the 349 Ocean House Road project that was the subject of a planning board workshop last December of 2004. 
Um, before we actually get to our agenda, I, I did just want to mention briefly that our dear friend and colleague, John Seraldo, uh, isn't able to be here with us tonight. He is a member of the planning board, um, and we are certainly wishing all the best for John and his family, and certainly wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, and uh, I also wanted to make a, a brief comment and on the, the outpouring of support from the town of John. It, it just makes me feel very grateful to live in a community like Cape Elizabeth. Uh, moving on to the agenda under old business, uh, the Grover Road subdivision amendments and private access way permit. Uh, Leland and Steve Murray are requesting amendments to the previously approved Grover Road subdivision to reconfigure existing lots, build a public road and construct a private access way for lot 11, all located at the end of Grover Road. U20-7. The application has been deemed complete and a public hearing has been held. The town engineer's comments are attached. The application will be reviewed tonight for compliance with section 16-2-5, amendments to previously approved subdivision plans, and section 19-7-9, private access ways. At this point, I uh, would invite the applicant to come to the podium and summarize uh, revisions to the plan. David. Mr. Chairman, uh can I recuse myself from this uh, presentation? John. Thank you. Uh, my name is John Mitchell, Mitchell Associates, and I represent Skip and Steve Murray uh, for this project. Uh, as, as the chairman said, this uh, project is, we, there are two applications. One is for an amendment to a previously approved subdivision <clears throat> to reconfigure some of the existing lots, and secondly, to provide a, um, to construct a private access way to lot 11. Uh, just to quickly review with the board, <clears throat> Grover Acres um, consists of an extension of Grover Road, uh, 440 feet from the end of the existing Grover Road, uh, within a 40-foot right, right of way, uh, which was a part of the previously approved subdivision. Other than the reconfiguration of lot 11 to accommodate the Hammerhead turnaround, uh, we are not changing these two lots here. On the previously approved subdivision plan, there were three lots on the easterly side of Grover Road. We are now proposing uh, two lots. Uh, in terms of the uh, revisions since the last time you saw this, uh, in your packet, um, I believe you have a letter from our firm dated January 27th, uh, which address all of the uh, staff and engineering comments that we received. Uh, most of these comments are fairly minor and technical in nature. Um, if the board would like, I, I will go over them, although they are pretty minor. Um, <clears throat> I think that the, the, the major um, addition since the board saw this last was the inclusion of all the easements. There are a total of seven easements, most of which are drainage easements. Uh, there is a turnaround <laughs> easement included as well as the easement deed for uh, Grover Road. Grover Road, as you know, is, is being designed as a public road which will be turned over to the town. And all of those easements, I believe, from the correspondence that Maureen just handed me, have been reviewed and approved by Mike Hill. Uh, the last round of comments, which we received, received from uh, the town engineer, Steve Harding, uh, there were basically there were four comments. I'll, I'll review those. Uh, the pedestrian trail, it was suggested that we pave the portion of the pedestrian trail, which is situated on a fairly steep slope. Uh, so we are, we've changed the plans to include a bituminous concrete surface to that portion of the trail. The, the remainder of the trail will be constructed in, with a uh, stone dust material. The second comment was to uh, just a minor clarification on the plans to 
uh, enlarge the graphic symbol of the granite monuments and the iron rods, which we've done. The third comment was to label the storm drain stubs. Uh, there are a couple catch basins uh, within the right of way, which it was recommended that we include stubs to accommodate the uh, connection from future home sites to the catch basins. We've done that. And the final comment was to amend or to revise the uh, construction cost estimate to itemize the items and to include. There were a couple items that were not included, which are now included. That has been done and submitted to Marine. Um, and then finally, there were, in Marine's memo, there were four conditions, and the applicant agrees to all four of those conditions. Okay, thank you. We have already had a public hearing, so at this point I would open it up to the board for any questions they may have for the applicant. <clears throat> Paul. Mr. Mitchell, is it the intent for the uh, for the access to lot number 11 to be, the, the, would a driveway to lot number 11 be through the hammerhead? Yes, it would. Uh, the intent was is to include the driveway off the end of this end of the, uh, the hammerhead. There is a note on the drawing to prohibit a driveway off of the northerly side of the hammerhead. And that was that was requested by uh, Bob Malley, I believe. Marina, question you if I can. Um, is it? looking through the ordinance, is, is it typical to allow driveways off of hammerheads or is there anything that prohibits allowing driveways off of hammerheads? Well, that's a good question. Typically, we have prohibited access off of driveways at the um, request of the Public Works Director. However, the Public Works Director is also authorized to issue street opening permits. And when people have come to him in the past, if people have asked for hammerheads off of driveways off of the right side, and by that I mean the side not where the, where the snow ends up when they're plowing the road, then he's issued those permits. So, you know, if it's, if it's on a portion of the hammerhead that's not going to be where all the snow ends up, then the public works director is not unhappy with issuing permits for those. So that's the reason for the prohibition on the north side. It's not to come in on the right, not the there, he doesn't want that to be right. Right. That was the next question. That answers my question. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Hearing none, do, does anyone have a motion for the board? motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans materials submitted and the facts presented the application of Leland and Steve Murray <clears throat> for amendments to the previously approved Grover Road subdivision to reconfigure existing lots build a public road and construct a private access way for lot 11 all located at the end of Grover Road U20-7 be approved subject to the following conditions that the trees to be preserved on the south side of Grover Road in a tree preservation plan that includes installation of a barrier at the drip line of the trees be added to the plans. That the road and drainage easement deeds be submitted. This, this one's already been done, though. But they haven't been seen by the town manager. Okay. So I would appreciate if you Thank could you. that condition. That the road and drainage easement deeds be submitted in a format acceptable to the town attorney and the town manager that the pathway extending from the end of Grover Road be serviced in a manner that will withstand erosion on steep slopes and that a performance guarantee be submitted in a form acceptable to the town attorney and an amount acceptable to the town engineer, all acceptable to the town manager prior to the issuance of a building permit and or any alteration of the site. Motion has been made by Barbara and seconded by Peter. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, the next item on the agenda is the Higgins Resource Protection Permit. Thomas Higgins and Suzanne Conley Higgins are requesting a resource protection permit to cross a wetland with a driveway on a lot located west of 1984 Sawyer Road. The application will be reviewed this evening for compliance with section 19-8-3 resource protection permit standards. Uh, and I would invite the applicant to the podium uh, and ask that you summarize any changes that have been made since you last appeared before us. Okay, as proposed, we're proposing a private driveway access to an RP2 wetland. It would include 850 square feet of impact an area that is 23 feet wide by 37 feet long. Uh, Stephen, Stephen Harding of O's Associates had reviewed the plan and had requested several amendments, uh, one of which was to add a 10-foot minimum of a 10-foot paved apron coming on to Sawyer Road. And that has been shown on the plan with one modification. We show it to the edge of the uh, property line. It sh should be extended to the edge of the actual pavement. Proposing a temporary stabilization construction entrance coming on to Sawyer Road. We were asked to add a 30 foot by 30 foot drainage easement around the culvert for the town of Cape Elizabeth to maintain that culvert. That has been added to the plan, but the language has not been added to the deed, subject to our comments and review as, as, as yet. We're asked to modify some placement of the silt, silt fencing, which has been done on the site plan. Riprap has been added to both sides of the culvert to protect the openings for proper flowage. Uh, specified the culvert size and we've also added MDOT type A and type B standards to the road cross sections. So those have been the, uh, the changes to the plan since you last saw it. Okay, thank you. We have uh, scheduled a public hearing tonight, so at this point I will open the hearing to anybody who may wish to speak on the uh, Higgins application. Seeing uh, no interested parties, I will now close the public hearing. Uh, at this point, I would invite members of the board if they have any questions. I did want to note for the board that under the proposed motion, condition one and condition three, same condition, so eliminate condition three. Uh, council, the, council, the planning board chair has asked me if these, if these conditions have been addressed. Um, under condition one, there is an easement location shown on the plan, but we don't have an actual deed, so I do think that condition still needs to be placed in the approval. Um, paved entrance, again, yeah, I think the applicant is agreeing to, to pave 10 feet. It's just the plan shows 10 feet from the property line. So we really want them to pave 10 feet from the edge of the existing edge of Sawyer Road. So it's an adjustment to the plan, and, and it should be shown on the plan. So we need to keep that condition. Condition three, as I said, is a repeat, so delete that one. Um, and then condition four, which will be your new number three, is a note that talks about what can happen outside the building envelope. This plan has a building envelope shown on it, but we've learned that unless we talk about what that actually means, there's some controversy and misinterpretations when we actually get to construction. Uh, we're suggesting that the building envelope shown would actually limit any alteration of the physical land area to the area of the building envelope. What that will do is it will establish a 10-foot wide minimum I think it's eight feet at the narrowest point, a minimum eight foot wide buffer from the RP2 wetland, and of course it gets larger in some locations. Um, if you don't define it this way, there are other ways to define it, but we need to find a way that 
keeps them out of the RP2 wetland. Otherwise, they're going to trigger having to come back to you for an RP2 permit to alter these wetland areas. And then the last condition is just that we have to reflect the above conditions on a revised set of plans before work can continue. Is there any questions? I, I assume that these conditions are all, are all acceptable to the applicant? Yes, they are. Okay. Any other questions from the board? David? I was just curious to ask a question relative to the elevations. And it goes along with Maureen's comment on um, the, the envelope. It appears that the entire, uh, well, three sides of the property look like they're surrounded with wetland. Um, is the actual building envelope elevation higher than the typical wetland that looks like it's somewhere between somewhere around 100 feet yes the and and the drainage arrows for directions of flow kind of showing that that upland area is crowned um, several feet above the wetlands and all the surface water pitches to the wetland area i, I was a little concerned about restricting uh, a landowner like this to stay within its footprint uh, but it appears that they pitch off, everything pitch, pitches away from the building envelope, so it isn't something somebody would want, want to maintain anyway. So that, was that your assumption, or is that the way I, do I read it that way? Could, could you repeat the question? It, on the, on the uh, two sides towards the wetland away from the driveway side of the house, does that land pitch uh, severely into the wetland? No, it's a gentle grade, you know, 5% or less. It's okay. a very even grade. So it's really not a hardship for an owner to stay within the, the uh, building envelope? No, uh, and, and it's a reality as far as to respect the, the RP2 wetland. We tried to offer as much of a buffer to the to the wetland as possible, given a reasonable size building for the neighborhood and an allowance for some deck in, in the rear for for enjoyment, but other than that, we're trying to pr propose a reasonable buffer. And the Higgins believe that they can uh, certainly live within that shown window. I have one other question. You show two pumps pumping into the disposal area. Uh, one of them looks from a septic tank. What is the other one? That is from, that's a good question. That's from the, the gray water system for the laundry, and that's a requirement for the town. And it's, it's an additional cost to the applicant, but it's a requirement that has to be met. That's what I've seen. Okay, thank you. No more. Thank you. No other questions? Anyone that have a motion for the board? Peter? Um, I have a motion for the board to consider. I move that based on the plans and material submitted and the facts presented, the application of Thomas Higgins and Suzanne Higgins Conley for a resource protection permit to construct a driveway over the wetland located on a lot west of 1084 Sawyer Road be approved subject to the following conditions. One, that an easement deed be provided for the existing culvert draining from Sawyer Road in a form acceptable to the town attorney and the town manager. Two, that the paved entrance of the driveway extend from the edge of the existing pavement of Sawyer Road Three, that a note be added to the plans stating that activities allowed outside the building envelope are the installation of the driveways and utilities. And that four, that there be no issuance of a building permit nor alteration of the site until the plans have been revised to reflect the above conditions. Okay. A motion was made by Peter and seconded by Jack. Further discussion? All those in favor? And yeah, the motion carries. Thank you. Under new business, Graham Pillsbury is requesting a private access way permit to construct a driveway 
excuse me, a driveway within a road right of way to access a lot located off the Todden Road, U12-5C. The ap application will be reviewed for compliance with section 19-7-9 private access ways. Uh, at this point, I would invite the applicant to come forward and introduce the project. Thank you. John Mitchell, uh, I represent Graham Pillsbury, who is here this evening. Uh, this application is for a private access way uh, to construct a drive within a right of way, uh, an approved uh, Paper Street right of way um, in the Shore Acre subdivision. Uh, the, the property, subject property, is, is an 18,576 square foot property uh, situated on this 50 foot wide. Uh, Paper Street right of way. Um, the, uh, the reason we're before you this evening is um, this lot does not have an approved frontage on or a frontage on an approved town road. Therefore, uh, we need to request a private access way. The uh, surrounding properties, uh, Graham Pillsbury, the applicant, owns this single-family residence here, and then there are three uh, single-family residences surrounding um, the subject property, and the Paper Street is located uh, to the southwest. Uh, so the proposal calls for a private access way. Uh, we've designed the private access way as well as the Hammerhead turnaround in accordance with the, the town standards for a private access way. Uh, the road is centered within the 50 foot right of way. It is 14 feet wide with uh, two foot wide grass shoulders on, on either side. The, uh, we've extended a public water line, a four inch water line uh, to the property. Uh, we have extended a four inch Water, I'm sorry, a four inch sewer line and a four inch water line um, with services extending to the property. Uh, we've also included underground electric telephone and cable from an existing utility pole situated off of Katahdin Road uh, with conduit extending to the, to the property. With regard to stormwater management, uh, we've taken a real hard look at stormwater realizing that there are problem areas um, within Katahdin Road. We uh, have talked to Bob Malley. We've visually observed uh, the issues ourselves, um, as well as reading some of the letters from the neighbors. And Graham has talked to several of the neighbors uh, in this area. Basically, what we're proposing is uh, we've, we've taken some measures to enhance the drainage in this area. Um, one measure would be to, we're installing or creating a interceptor swale, drainage swale in this vicinity here, to capture the runoff uh, which currently flows in this direction here. We're capturing this and um, directing it into this drainage swale uh, which ultimately will flow into this culvert here into the existing storm drain system. This is an existing 8-inch pipe. We're replacing the 8-inch pipe with a 12-inch pipe to increase the capacity of, of the stormwater. That's one measure. Another measure is to, in the grading of this uh, private access way, we're directing the runoff onto the uh, southerly side of, of the roadway uh, to flow down to an, an area which has been enlarged um, at the culvert inlet to detain the water during peak storms, during a 10, 25 year storm. Um, when we're getting a lot of volume of raw water, uh, we're creating a, a mini detention basin in, in this area here. I should say that Lesbury of BH2M did the stormwater management uh, plan for this property. We're also um, regrading the existing swale 
in this area here next to Katahdin Road. Uh, right now, it is, it's, a, it's a fairly shallow drainage swale. Uh, there are times, apparently, during a 10, 25-year storm, or during a higher frequency storm, that the water tends to overflow the ditch onto Katahdin Road. So we're, we're regrading that to improve the drainage characteristics of, of that uh, swale. We're also adding a new culvert, 12-inch culvert, under the private access way. I, I would like to ask the board to uh, just to turn to, this is in our packet dated January 27th, uh, turn to page four of the stormwater management plan. Uh, which illustrates a, an analysis of the pre-development conditions and the post-development conditions of the drainage. And as you can see in the, in the last column, titled Over Road, uh, during the 10 and 25 year storm, some of the water overflows, uh, overflows the ditch onto the roadway. And this basically is because of the shallowness of the, of the drainage swale and the eight inch culvert is, under, is too small. Under the post development conditions, you'll see that we've improved the condition so that there shouldn't be any overage or overflowing um, during peak storms. And as less indicated, the plan should improve the local drainage conditions for the, for the abutments. There's been a lot of mention in some of the correspondence, uh, particularly from uh, Steve Harding, about the crowning of, of this road. And uh, this is a 14-foot wide road, which is basically one lane. Uh, and you, you don't crown a road. And we, we've explained this to Steve, and I think that he has agreed with us um, that you don't crown a one-lane road because during the winter time when you're plowing, um, the plow only hits the, the crown and doesn't get the, the sides. So that, that's one reason. The other reason, as I mentioned, we're trying to direct all the drainage uh, onto this side to help detain the runoff. Uh, Steve has come up with a couple suggestions uh, which we agree with, um, which will show on our next round of submission is to create a little dip here so that the water coming down uh, will not go on to Katahdin Road but will be directed to either side uh, into the swale. Um, and lastly, I guess that there also has been a lot of mention about whether we should design and build this road for the eventual future extension uh, of this road. And I guess it's, it's our feeling that we're not responsible for that, that we have designed this uh, as a private access way in accordance with the ordinance. Um, and in fact, uh, Graham has spoken to at least one of the immediate neighbors to talk about whether they'd be uh, interested in, in participating in the um, in the construction of this roadway because they have future lots that could be developed and he was not interested. So uh, it is our opinion that you know this this we're designing this to service one single family lot as a private access way uh, and uh, and that's the way that uh, you know, if, if this were to be extended at some point, that it, it would become the responsibility of whoever is developing uh, further in this, in this direction here to come back and, and develop this as a private road. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, at this point, we first need to address the issue of completeness. Uh, I know from the town, uh, planner's memorandum that there do not appear to be any items that are incomplete. But does anybody have any questions about that issue? Seeing none, is there a motion? David. 
motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented the application of graham pillsbury for a private access way permit to construct a driveway to access a lot located off katahdin road u12-5 c be deemed complete I just want to point out this is only to determine the issue of whether the application is complete. We're not, by voting in favor of this motion, rendering a final decision on the application. In any event, all those in favor? Opposed? I'd like to now open up for a discussion among the board members as to whether we ought to have a site walk and or hearing on this application. Barbara? Absolutely to both. We've had a tremendous amount of response. And I'd like us to say it publicly and then invite any of the neighbors who'd like to meet us and watch us take our site walk to please do so. Agreed. I see a lot of nodding heads. I concur as well. Uh, Maureen, do we typically try to come up with a date tonight? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, right. The public hearing on this application will be the third Tuesday of March, is that right? March 15th. March 15th. What dates and times look good for folks? Saturday. The Saturday? Is that what you want? Ah. We're also fighting a vacation here. Fine. The Saturday after your workshop. Actually, I'm going to be out of town that weekend, but I could try to get over there on my own if that date works for everybody else. And the difficulty with the morning afternoon is obviously that well, the sun. So, right. That could be really active on Does March 5th work for everybody else? Yeah. Okay, what time? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. <coughs> So we will have a site walk uh, for this application on March 5th, which is a Saturday at 8 o'clock in the morning. And anybody who is interested is welcome to attend the uh, site walk. And we've also decided on a public hearing, obviously, for March 15th. Do members of the board have any questions of the applicant at this point? Or do you wish to hold off until we have the public hearing? OK. All right. Thank you. Oh, yes, you do. Thank you. Peter. I move that uh, the above application be tabled to the regular March 15, 2005 meeting of the planning board, at which time the public hearing will be held. Motion has been made. Do I hear a second? Seconded. Seconded by Paul. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you. Seeing no other business, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All those in favor? The okay, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.